i let us discuss the solution of this problem in this problem we are given a grid or a matrix of size n cross n that is it would be a square matrix and we have the value 0 1 2 and 3 so 0 means the value is a wall and 1 means it is source and 2 means it is destination and 3 means a blank check whether their path is possible from source to destination okay and we can traverse it up down right and left so you can think of like the games we used to play when we were small enough so that from our current position we can only use the arrow keys and we can move in the four direction and we can move in a particular direction if the direction is not blocked so here blocking means if it is zero so if it is zero we can't go okay so it is not possible to move if the distance is a source okay so distance is a source means we would move from start from that position and the goal is to reach the position 2 and 3 is a blank cell 3 is the blank cell where you can step in and you can move forward now it might be the case suppose we have a matrix here itself okay or let, let us solve the first sample test case itself this is the source and this is the destination so we can move in only four direction so we want to move from source to destination if we want to move from source to destination in the first sample test case itself we need to go from the blank cell that is from 3 so we come from here and we try to find 3 in all possible direction but we can only find direct to 3 here but from here we can't move to here and there is no other 3 that is applicable that is why there is no path that is why the answer to this is zero itself now suppose we have a matrix here itself so let, let me draw a matrix quickly suppose we have a matrix here itself but what needs to be done is we need to go from 3 so suppose there are three trees and only this three will lead me to the destination suppose this is the scenario so if only either of them would lead me to the destination and there is no proper way of knowing which three would lead me to the destination there there are pro three four probabilities like we have no threes that would lead to the destination we have only one three we have two three and we have three three but sub let us just take the condition where only one three would lead us to the destination and there is no greedy way or a proper way to find which three would lead the destination so we need to traverse all path we need to traverse all the path so we need to traverse all the path in a grid so if we need to traverse all the path in a grid and we have a source and a destination then for sure this is a graph problem so if this is a graph problem and we need to traverse okay and the path whichever path we take if we can reach the destination there is no weightage and all so there is no weight and all so if there is no weight we have two algorithm for traversal that is bfs that is breadth first search and dfs and both of them would work but in dfs that is a recursive so we just need to pass and if we have a option to choose between recursive and iterative we should always go with the iterative because recursive takes up the stack space so we will move forward with bfs let us quickly learn what is bfs so in bfs we have something like this suppose we have one we have two and we have three and we have four itself so what we basically do is we insert the root in the queue itself suppose this is the queue and we would insert one now after inserting one we would first traverse this one so when i'm tra done traversing i would mark this and then i would insert all the neighbors of one the so neighbors of one are two and three so i would insert two and three into the queue now in the queue we push elements from the back and we take out elements from the front that is first come for sub basis so now we would traverse all first we would traverse two so we two is traverse now and all the neighbors of two which are not visited one is already visited so we won't do that next we would come to three neighbors of three which is not visited that is only four we would insert this four and we would remove this then we would come to four first we would visit this and then we would try to find a neighbor which is unvisited that is what we need to do so now what was the thing we need to do we initialized a queue so we initialize we would initialize a queue 
Then here we inserted the root of the tree. In graph, we insert the source. So we would just write insert the source itself. Then what we would do is we would first visit the source. And then we would insert unvisited neighbors of source. Unvisited neighbors of the source itself. Now let us go to the sublime text and implement the BFS in general so that you would have a proper idea so that after that the level 2 is to implement it in the grid itself so that you would have a better understanding. This is the simple uh, template itself. What we do is we would first implement a queue of size of int. I would name it as queue. Now we would insert the source. Suppose we have a value source. And then what we would do is while the queue is not empty, okay, while the queue is not empty, so we would first take out the front element. So int v is equals to q dot front itself. Then what we would do is q dot pop the element. Then we would traverse the neighbors of the queue, that is g of q itself. And then if it is not visited of e where visited array would store the elements visited in this fashion if it is not visited we would just push it to the queue okay and this after this the vfs would be done itself now a bonus tip for you would be to use pairs instead of int and then you can insert the source with the distance as zero then all the neighbors would have the distance plus one and this would tell us the single source shortest path. But here we just need to know if a path exists or not. So this is not required. Now, this is what needs to be done. Now what we would do is we would first insert the source and then we would try to go to the neighbors. Now in this way, what we need to do is we need to insert the neighbors, which is a blank cell. We can't go where it is a wall. This is what? So this is a little bit different from the graph itself, but it is very similar. Now let us start the implementation itself. So we have the grid here. So I would just name it grid so that we need to write very less in the meantime. So we would first have n is equals to grid dot size. Okay. So as we have n cross n so we don't need to have the m itself we can simply write m is equals to n or what we can do is g of 0 dot size if we have a dimension different but here we have n cross n so we can do that or rather what we can do is instead of rows and columns we can just use n every time now what we would do is we would have the q itself okay and the q would be pair it's not that we need we want to calculate the distance it's because we would iterate on the i and j so we want to i and j so earlier we wanted the only index but here we want the i and j that is why we would have it and then we would name it as q itself now what we would do is we would traverse i in i is equals to zero i is less than n and i plus plus and then we would go to the j that is rows and then columns j is equals to 0, j is less than n and j plus plus. What we would do is, now we would first take out the source. So if g of i and j equals to the source itself, we would push that i and j itself. We, would, uh, we are making it 0 index keep this in mind okay and next it would remain the same because we have there is only one source and one destination so we just need to and we can just break from here to, to optimize a little bit on the time complexity why optimize a little bit because in the worst case scenario the source would be at the very bottom that is why we would iterate on the whole but if it is other than bottom it would optimize on the time complexity Fair enough. Now we would use the usual q dot empty thing, and we would first have int x. What is x? Q dot front 
we want to access the row itself so what we would do is this would be the first in the pairs and then we have y q dot front and then second itself okay and then what we would do is and then we would simply pop that element from the queue because that work is complete now what we would do is we need to go on all the four direction now to go on all the four direction what we can do is we can have simply a loop kind of thing like suppose this is 0 0 this is 0 1 this is 1 0 this is 1 1 suppose we are at the current index that is 1 1 let us write few more that is 0 2 and then 1 2 and then 2 0 2 1 and 2 2 okay suppose we are at here so we need to move here so what we can do is we can do y plus 1 so this is x would remain the same and y plus 1 x remains the same y plus 1 and here we are going x minus 1 and y would remain the same we would move here and x would remain the same and y minus 1 then we go down and this would be x plus 1 and y would remain the same so now what we can see is at first we need to add then we need to subtract from x so why not we have an array kind of like this like we would have 0 minus 1 0 and 1 then we have one another array like this 1 0 minus 1 and 0 so if we add the corresponding values both of these then we would be able to traverse in all the four direction yes that is what we would do and this is a very old practice that many people do basically this is mostly used in competitive programming to save on the implementation time but we would write it here also what we would do is int dx is equals to what minus 1 and then 0 and then 1 and 0 itself okay then we would go down and dy that is the change in this is equal to nothing but 0 minus 1 and 0 and 1 itself okay Fair enough, this is what needs to be done. Now, just to give you a bonus over this, what can, basically, we you can move in all the E direction too by using this dx and dy. Like if the program is telling us that you can move in all the E direction, then you can have this array also. This array is gonna work seamlessly for if we want to move on all the four directions, E direction. So we would pop, so this thing is pop as of now now what we would do is we would iterate over this in i is equals to 0 i is less than 4 and then i plus plus and then we would have int nx is equals to x plus dx of i and then in ny is equals to y plus dy of i itself now we need to know suppose we are at this particular index itself if we are at this particular index we can go up we can move on the left hand side but we can't move here and here if we move here and here this is not valid so we need to tell us we need someone to tell us if the direction in which we are moving is valid or not we need that so what we would do is we would have something known as bull valid which would take the x and y and it would take the size int n pair itself now what we would do is we would just say that if x is less than 0 or x is greater than equal to n okay or 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 y is less than 0 or y is greater than equal to n then we need to return false from this point or else we would return true so basically if we are less than zero that means this is not valid greater than equal to zero this is also not valid 
so this would tell us if it is valid or not so next after we move here what we would do is we would check valid and then we would pass nx and ny and then we have the n itself now what we would do is if it is valid then only we would proceed that if g of nx and ny is equals to equals to 2 that means we have reached the destination then we would return true why because we are checking that after this because if we try to access an index which is not valid then we would have an error that is index out of bound error that is why we don't want that so if it is valid and within the boundary then we would check that if it is not then there are two scenarios so it can't be the source because source is already done then it can be destiny then it can be wall or a blank space so if g of nx and ny is equals to equals to 3 that is it is blank then g of nx and ny will be equal to the source we would convert it to a source and then we would simply push it to the queue okay why we are converting to the source because the next time when we would again encounter this okay in nx and ny how we would encounter i would show you suppose we are at this index and this index is already processed so if we are coming here and this is a blank cell we would again process this that is why we are making this as source and we are only processing the blank ones fair enough and then after all this point if we are not able to reach the destination that means we would return false so okay this is what needs to be done let us just compile and run and see if we get an ac or not So it is giving us a correct output for the sample test case. Let us just submit and see. And yes, we got an AC. That's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.